Welcome to the coverage of the Highlander National Championship 2017. My name is Kanishka from Paragon Games and I am joined by Andrew Vance from the Highlander Points Committee. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so this year it's the 20th anniversary of uh, Australian Highlander. The first event was held sometime in late 96. I'm not sure of the exact date, um, but roughly at the same time as Mirage came out. Um, Highlander is a format which is, for those of you familiar with Magic, it's kind of like vintage. Um, so more or less every card, every printed for Magic is legal. Uh, we use the vintage band list, can't play any of the wacky silver boarded cards and your cards have to have you know real magic backs but otherwise everything that's ever been printed um so the difference between highlander and australian highlander in particular and uh regular vintage is um it's a singleton format so unlike in vintage where you might play four force of wills and four brainstorms and whatever um in highlander everything's restricted essentially um so other than basic lands and cards like Relentless Rats, you can only have one copy of anything. Uh, the other major difference, which pre prevents it from being just singleton vintage, um, where everyone's playing the whole restricted list, is uh, we've got a thing called a points list. So this was an idea that was come up with uh, by a couple of Canberra guys, uh, Merlin Evans and um, Marcus Kassar, I'm pretty sure was the other guy involved. Um, after the f We held a first Highlander event where people were just essentially playing vintage um and then they come up with an idea that would let everyone still play all the cool cards they wanted to play um just not all at once so uh the way the points list works is uh and the number of the value of various cards on the list changes periodically uh it's one of the things what's the main thing the points committee does um and the number of points you can play has changed uh, at a couple of times over the game's history but you can play some number of pointed cards so um as an example ancestral recall is four points um out of a possible seven i think anyone who's played magic at all would agree that ancestral is a it's a pretty good card it's pretty good. um it's a card that still sees a lot of play at four points um partially because it's very powerful and partially because there's people who own them who just really want to play them <laughs> um uh, but ancestral is a card that's always been in sort of the top range of the points list um, uh, which it currently shares with Black Lotus is the only other card at that point. Um, so we've got four gradations of points. Uh, so at three points, uh, we've got uh, a number of tutors, like uh, Demonic Tutor. Um, so Demonic Tutor, Imperial Seal, uh, Vampiric Tutor uh, are all uh, up there. And again, uh, <laughs> They sort of play against the singleton nature of the format is part of the reason that there's so many points. Also, they're just very, very good magic cards. Um, we've also got things like uh, Time Vault and Tinker, um, which are cards that pretty much win the game on their own. Uh, so if you resolve a Time Vault and you have constructed your deck in a rational fashion, uh, drawing a Time Vault is going to win you the game a pretty large percentage of the time. Um, and in a similar vein, Yogmos will... Uh, doesn't get play in a lot of decks, but uh, one of the better decks in the format is uh, Storm. Storm, for those who aren't familiar with the term, is a deck that plays a bunch of mana accelerants and card drawing and card filtering effects, um, and then play tries to close out the game with a, a card with the ability Storm, um, which puts a bunch of copies of itself on the stack for the number of spells you've played this turn, and your opponent, you know, more or less dies at that point. And Yogmas Will is an extremely powerful card um, in that sort of deck. Uh, Will Will is at three partially because to control the Storm deck, we're happy for it to exist, but we don't want it to be powerful. We don't want it to be overly powerful. Uh, so they can play Lotus and Yogmas Will, and that's all the points they get to play. So if there's any tutors which would be too powerful in that deck or similar decks in particular, um, we can just put them in at one point and lock it out of the Storm deck. So at two points are cards that don't win you the game on their own, but they provide you with either a they provide you with a lot of advantage either early or late in the game. Um, so examples of that are uh, the Moxes, uh, such as Mox Ruby, um, which in an aggressive deck, if you have one of these early in the game, it provides an advantage that is often that the player is often able to cascade into enough long term advantage that their opponents just not going to win. 
Um, but it doesn't win the game on its own. Uh, there are times when you draw it late and it's just a land. Um, another example, the other category of two-point cards are cards like Skull Clan, um, which are very powerful and provide a lot of advantage, um, but again, generally don't win the game on their own. So this includes things like uh, Strip Mine, Channel, which does sometimes win the game on its own, but it's not at the power level of things like uh, Time Vault and Yogmoth's Will. Um, Teleri Academy, which, you know, in the right circumstances, also provides a huge amount of advantage. Um, and then at one point, we've got quite a few other cards. Um, so, so we've got things which are lower quality tutors are offering at one point. So things like uh, Green Sun Zenith, um, which is a great card, but it's not as good as your, you know, mystical tutors and demonic tutors. Um, We've got cards like uh, Wasteland, which, again, provide a fair bit of advantage. It's not quite as good as a Strip Mine, um, but it's a pretty good card. All the draw sevens uh, are at one point. Um, and then, because it's an Eternal format, blue's pretty good. There are a bunch of blue cards at one point. So, uh, Force of Will's a good example. Jace the Mind Sculptor, uh, Mana Drain, those sorts of cards. Um, there's a lot of those at one point. And you can find all of that info uh, on Oz Eternal, which is at www.ozeternal.com, I'm pretty sure. Possibly .au. But, um, <laughs> we'll have that in the video link. We'll have that yep. in the video link. Okay. <laughs> uh, so so that's, that, that's the, the second major thing about Highlander is... So you've got the potential to have games which are as explosive as any vintage game. Like, Storm can absolutely win the game on the first or second turn if it gets a really good draw. But because it can't play you know, a pile of moxes and other tutors, um, it's a lot less consistent. And so the general overall power level is something more akin to modern uh, than vintage or legacy. Um, you know, decks are less consistent, um, which means that the ridiculous combo decks are not quite in, as ridiculous in general. Um, and the other fact, another factor about Highlander is a lot more variety of cards get played. Um, so in Vintage, you know, once you found your after your restricted cards, you might have twenty to twenty-five more cards in your deck. So once you found the five to seven most powerful effects, you just put four copies in the deck, and and that's done. Um, Obviously, in Highlander, because of its singleton nature, that can't happen. Um, so, again, talking about a deck like Storm, you've got cards like Desperate Ritual and Pyretic Ritual might get played, which you would not touch with a barge pole in a format where you could play four of a better card. Um, in the aggressive decks, you're much more likely to play, you know, the fifth and sixth string one drops because they're good enough. They're not great cards. They're not as good as your Wild McCattles, but you can only play one Wild McCattle. Um, so that's that's the nature of the format. So um, we recently saw some changes in pointing. Yeah. So Can talk about those changes. Really? Absolutely. So so the points list changes. Uh, the committee communicates mostly by email, and the points list changes uh, typically when Wizards changes their points. Um, Wizards reads the points announcement. Points announcement caught us a bit by surprise, and we're not going to go to doing it every six-ish weeks, which they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. But so every three months or so. Um, we look at what's happened and try and balance the power level of the format. We find cards that are pointed that are underperforming, um, that maybe can be given new life, um, and we find decks that are overperforming uh, in much of the same way Wizards does Band of Restricted Announcements to try and make sure that, you know, the metagame's healthy, that people want to play the format, that kind of thing. Um, so in the last round, we ended up changing two cards. So the first one's Mind Twist. Mind Twist was at two points for a very long time. Um, for as long as I can remember, Mind Twist has been you know, a pretty archetypal two-point card. But in recent years, it hasn't seen a huge amount of play. Um, it's a card that the community brings up fairly frequently as something that could lose points. Um, so we thought we would try that experiment. Um, I, I know from having looked at the deck lists for this event, there are definitely some in the room. Um, so it'll be exciting to see how those go. Okay, cool. Um, an example of a card that we added a point to is Dig Through Time. Um, 
as those of you who've, well, you know, basically ever played it know, Kick Through Time <laughs> provides a pretty huge chunk of advantage. Um, in a format like Highlander, where there's fetch lands everywhere, um, you're often casting it for two or three or four mana. Um, you get to see a pretty big chunk of your deck. You know, by the time you cast it, it's probably a sixth or a seventh of your deck, which in a format like Highlander, where you've got a lot of singletons, lets you get a lot of card selection, lets you get away with playing a lot of uh, slightly more dubious silver bullets in your deck. Mm -hmm. um, and blue decks in general have been doing very well in recent events, so um, we added a point to that just to, you know, pip them slightly, um, slightly diversify the range of points they've been choosing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes as well. Okay. Awesome. Um, any other Look, comments you need to make about Highland? Um, Highland is a great format. So, so many of you watching uh, might have seen uh, people like Marshall Sutcliffe talking about Canadian Highlander recently. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't an identical format, but it's a pretty similar one. Uh, so Canadian Highlanders, 100 cards, no sideboard, and they've got a points list of their own, which was derived from... like th Their original points list was one of ours, okay. and they've spread from there. Um, uh, and they've been going for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years or something. Okay. Um, but otherwise, it's, otherwise, ours is a very similar format. So ours is 60-card decks, 15-card sideboards, um, and is, you know, sort of more or less like playing uh, higher variance vintage. Yep. Um, the, the variance isn't... It's not, it's not, in general, the bad kind where your deck just doesn't do anything. Um... It's just the kind that means that games are much less identical to each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you've got a higher variety of creatures and burn spells and artifacts and so on in your deck than you normally would. Um, so, so the games tend to have a lot of... Um, they tend to be very exciting games where you've got to think a lot about what you're doing and your options um, in situations that quite probably haven't come up before. You've probably never mm -hmm. had quite this set of, you know, 10 or 15 cards. Yeah that are your cards to play with for the game. Um, so, yeah, look, it's a very fun and exciting format. Yeah, cool. No, uh, definitely. And I think some of the games that I saw on the weekend um, definitely looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. There was a lot of interesting things happening. Um, and, yeah, we might wrap it up and get into some games. Absolutely. Awesome. So, thanks, man. So, um, yeah, all the deck lists will be up on Oz Eternal. All the deck lists should be up on Oz Eternal, or at least the top 16. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there'll be a bunch of conversation there and on the Facebook group, uh, which we'll link in the... Yeah, we'll put that in the description. Description? Well. Yep. Um, and if it sounds like an interesting format, uh, come along and have a chat with us. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Vance. Uh, let's get into some games. <laughs>